In this tutorial, we'll cover everything you need to know about using the Acrobat JavaScript console window. The console window is the most important tool in the Acrobat JavaScript debugger. I can't overstate how incredibly useful this tool is for developing code in Acrobat. I use it all the time and I would encourage you to use it as much as you can. The most important thing you need to know about the console is that it is an immediate mode command window. Immediate mode means that JavaScript commands are executed immediately and the results printed out in the console window itself. You type the code directly into the window as shown here. Press Control or Command Enter to send the code to the Acrobat JavaScript interpreter where it is executed. Then the result is sent back to the console window as a text string. This particular code returns the file name of the PDF we're viewing right now. The next most important thing to know is that the console has the highest trust level. For security reasons, Acrobat restricts some operations based on the trust level of the code's location. For example, PDF files can come from anywhere, so without any other trust mechanism, code in a PDF has low trust. But the only way for code to be entered into and run in the console is for the Acrobat user to enter it themselves. So therefore, the console has the highest trust. The primary use of the console is to run code. It's much easier to debug and test code in the console than in a document, form, or folder level script. So, it's a great place to test out coding ideas before entering them into a document, form, or folder level script. In many cases, it's also faster and easier to write a short script for analyzing and modifying a PDF than it is to use the Acrobat UI. In fact, some modifications can only be done with the script because there aren't any menu items or buttons for them. The form flatten operation is an example of one of these. The other major use for the console is for displaying messages. When a script isn't working, the console is the first place to look for an error message. Both runtime exceptions and JavaScript interpreter errors are displayed here. There is also a way to embed messages into your own code so you can track the progress of your script. I do this all the time. It is the best way to debug large or complex scripts. Now let's see how the console window actually works. There are three different ways to display or activate the console. First, there is a button for the console on the JavaScript's Tools panel. You'll find this set of JavaScript tools on the Main Tools window towards the very bottom. There it is. Click on Add to place it on your own Tools panel. This is an important tool set and you should have this shortcut on your tool panel for easy access. I'll click on it to display all of the tools available. These buttons over here are for editing scripts within PDFs and this button, when I click on it, displays the debugger panel. The console window is the most important of the tools on this panel and you'll find it in this area right here. Make sure that console is displayed in the view dropdown. Let's look at the other methods for activating the console. There's also a keyboard shortcut, Control J or Command J on the Mac. This is the one that I use most often. It'll save you a lot of time. The third method is the JavaScript command console.show. This command is used to display the debugger in Acrobat Reader, as we'll see later on. There are a couple of different methods for running code in the console window. The first is to place the cursor on the same line as the code and then press Control Enter on Windows or Command Enter on the Mac. This runs that one line and only that one line of code on which the cursor is set. You can also press the Enter button on a 10 key keypad on either Mac or Windows to do the same thing, if you have one of these on your keyboard. The return value from execution is then displayed after the last line of text in the console window. Let's give it a try. I'll press Control J to display the console. Then click in the console window area to start entering code. This is the first time I've used the console and by default the console window is disabled. So Acrobat asks me if I want to enable it. I'll click yes and I won't have to do that again because that setting has now been changed in the Acrobat preferences. Let's get back to entering the code. I'll do something very simple. 1 plus 2 and press control enter to execute that code and the return value of 3 is placed on the next line. The return value is simple text, just like any other text in the console window, and I can use it as part of an execution. I'll add a divide by 2 to the returned value of 3, and when I hit Control Enter, a return value of 1.5 is placed on the next line. Now, let's try something a little more useful. 
this.pageNum, which returns the number of the current page, which in JavaScript is 4. However, on the Acrobat user interface, it says we're on page 5. This is because in JavaScript, page numbers are zero based, meaning that page 1 of the PDF is page 0 in JavaScript. It's very important to keep this in mind when writing JavaScript. This is a special word in JavaScript that references the current object. In the JavaScript console window, the current object is always the current document. Page num is a property of the document object. That's why this line of code works. However, since this is assumed to be the document object in the console window, I can leave it off and execute page num all by itself, which returns the same value. In the console window, you don't need to prefix document properties or functions with the word this. Another useful bit of code is path, another property of the document object that returns the file path location for the document. Let's clear out the window and see what happens if we run this all by itself. It returns this funny looking notation that has the word doc in it. Objects are by nature complex and don't have simple text values for printout. So in the case of an object, the console window prints out some type information using this funny looking format. In the case of a field object, it have the word field on it. For other types of objects, there are other types of type information that are printed out. So the console window tries to print out all return values as a text string. Numbers, of course, are simple values and they are easy to display as text. Arrays are just lists of other things, so the console window prints out an array as a comma-separated list of the values of the array elements, whatever they may be. And objects, as we've just seen, are a little special. There's a function built into all objects named toString, which is responsible for converting the object into a string. By default, this function returns the simple description string we just saw. But some objects override this function to print out more useful info, and that's something you can actually do for your own developer-defined objects. In the case where execution has no return value, the console returns the word undefined. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. First, I'll declare a variable. When I run this code, the console returns the word undefined. Even though our variable a does have a value, which is 3, the value of the entire operation on this line is the variable declaration, and variable declarations do not have a return value. But if I want to make sure that my variable a does have a value, I can select it and then hit Control enter to run just the selected text. Now let's run multiple lines of code. Here's a simple loop that prints out all the letters of the text in the variable b, which is to say the text hello. First, I'll select all the lines together and hit Control enter to run all lines of the code. The results are displayed on the following lines, followed by the word true. There are a couple of different things going on with this code. First, I'm using the console.println command to print text of my own choosing directly to the console window. Each time this command is run, it displays the output on the next line in the console window. Each letter in the word hello is printed on a different line. The console.println function is the best tool for debugging JavaScript in Acrobat. Use it to keep track of what your script is doing. Let's take a look at the word true at the end of the display. Remember that the console prints out the values of the executed code. When running multiple lines, the value of the whole thing is the value of the last line of code run. In this case, that last line of code is console.println, which always returns a value of true. If console.println did not return any value at all, our last line would be undefined instead of true. The console window is also the place where Acrobat displays error messages. There are a couple of different kinds of error messages, code errors and system messages. A code error happens when Acrobat has a problem executing the code. For example, if there is a syntax error or some other kind of execution error. A system message happens when Acrobat doesn't like something about what the code is trying to do. This usually has to do with security. For example, trying to access a file in a protected location. 
As an example, I'll deliberately introduce a syntax error into this code by deleting one of the semicolons. Now, when I execute the entire block of code, Acrobat returns a message saying missing semicolon after for loop initializer. It's telling us very specifically what the problem is. When a script isn't working, the console is the first place to look to see if there are any reported error messages. So far, everything we've done has been an Acrobat Professional. You probably haven't noticed, but I've switched out the viewer for this last slide to Acrobat Reader because we'll need to debug scripts in Acrobat Reader as well as in Professional, especially because Reader has its own set of restrictions that will cause more headaches for scripting than you have in Acrobat Pro. The issue, of course, is that there aren't any JavaScript tools in Reader except for the console, which doesn't have any buttons or keyboard shortcuts. There are only two ways to activate the console in Reader. In the first method, you'll need to set the JavaScript preferences, which you'll find at the bottom of the Edit menu. On the Preferences dialog in the JavaScript category, click on the Show Console on Errors and Messages. This is a very useful option to have selected anyway for helping you to discover errors in your code. However, as a method for deliberately showing the console, it's not very good and I'm not going to go through the trouble to show how to do this by deliberately creating a document with an error in it. Instead, we have a much better method, which is to create our own menu item or toolbar button for displaying the console using the console.show function that you saw in an earlier slide. Here's some sample code that you can put into a folder level script that will create a menu item on the edit menu for displaying the console. There is also a free tool button at this URL or go to the pdfscripting.com page at www.pdfscripting.com and click on the free automation tools link. Go to a list of free automation tools and then scroll down to find the Reader JavaScript Console Window button. This is a free download. Anyone can get it. This will put a toolbar button on your add-ins toolbar in Acrobat Reader. Now you know everything you need to know to get started using the console in Acrobat Professional and Reader. Use it early and often.